All right, worksheet day 20 on business math. Um, again, it's under the interest section of your pie chart, compound interest and present value. It said Frank Adams invested $4,000 for a period of two years at an interest rate of 4.25 compounded annually. If we just use the simple interest formula and compound interest, what we're just going to do is calculate the interest for the first year, add it, then take that amount, calculate the interest for the second year, and add it. So if I do the out amount of interest in year one, I'm taking the $4,000 times the interest rate of 4.25%, so 0 0.0425, but I'm going to only calculate it for one year. So I'm just going to use one there. Even though it's a two-year loan, I just use the one because I'm just doing one year at a time. And so I take my $4,000 times 0 0.0425 times one year, so $170 would be the amount of the interest. The value of my investment at the end of year one then would be the $4,000, switch colors here, $4,000 plus my $170. So $4,170 would be the value after the end of the first year. So then when I figure out the amount of interest for the second year, I now have a value of $4,170. I'm going to take that times the point zero four two five, and I'm going to keep it in there for one more year. So I'm just going to use one year again. So I'm going to take my $4,170 times 0 0.0425 and I have $177 and I'd have to round that up to 23 cents. $177.23. That's the interest for just the second year earnings. So on here then the value after the end of the second year I would have my $4,170 plus my $177.23. And so if I take 4000 170 plus 177 dollars and 23 cents the value after two years four thousand three hundred forty seven dollars and 23 cents So number two, pretty much the same kind of thing there. Oops, where did my paper go? Span that so when I grab the side it goes the right one. It says Amy Torres invested $12,000 for a period of two years again. We're going to calculate the interest at 3.75% compounded annually. So finding the interest for the first year. Started with a value of $12,000, my interest rate 0 0.0375, and I'm going to leave it in there for one year at a time. And so if I take 12,123 times 0 0.0375 times 1, I get $450. So $450 is my interest after the first year. The value then is $12,000 plus $450, so $12,450 would be my interest at the end of the first, or would be my value at the end of the first year. Year number two then, on year number two we're starting with a value of $12,450. My interest rate is 3.75%, so 0 0.0375. And again, I'm going to leave it for one more year. So 12,450 times 0 0.0375 times one year, rounding that off $466.88. I have 875, so I got to round that off to 88 cents. And so the value of my investment. $12,450 plus the $466.88 that I got in interest. $12,450 plus $466.88 gives me 
$13,383.70. What in the heck did I get in here? I better clear out my calculator and try that again. $12,450 plus $466.88. That looks better. $12,916.81. Sometimes it helps to recognize if you punch something in wrong. $12,916.88. Number three, doing the same thing. Sam Patterson invested $5,000 for a period of two years at an interest rate of 4.75% compounded annually. So find the interest in year one. So I started with $5,000. I have 0 .0475 for my interest rate, and I'm leaving it there for one year at a time. 5,000 times 0 .0475 gives me $237.50 in interest. The value of my investment then it was worth $5,000, but I made $237.50 in interest, so now it is $5,237.50 at the end of the first year. So for year two, my value is $5,237.50. I'm going 0 .0475 for interest, and I'm leaving it in there for one year. So 5,237.50 times 0 .0475 times 1. Rounding that off, I will get 248.78. $248.78 would be my interest for year two. So my value after year two, it was worth $5,237.50. I'm going to add my $248.78. Clear my calculator this time. $5,237.50 plus $248.78 means that the value after year two is $5,486.28. $5,486.28. So in number four, we are going to do compound interest. And because it would take a really long time if you invested something for five years or nine years or 20 years to do one year at a time, they're going to use the daily compound interest table to calculate the total investment at the end of, in this case, five years. So Amy Hughes invested $4,100 at a Blue Chip Securities Incorporated for a period of five years at an interest rate of 3% compounded daily. We're going to use the daily compound interest table. And again, on Alex, I'll have a link for you to click on it. If I bring it up over here, my daily compound interest table get rid of all this writing, looks something like this. So I am going to put it in at 3% for five years. So I want that number in there, 3% for five years, 1.1618. 1.1618 is where that would intersect. I'm going to write it down there and I'm going to go back to my thing. Oh, it didn't show me what it was. <laughs> It was 1.1618. That's the number from my table. I am then going to multiply it times my $4,100. And that's going to give me the value of my investment after I had it in there for five years. So I'm going to take 1.1618 times 4100, 4100, and round it off to the nearest cent because it doesn't look like it tells me to figure it out to any other place. So $4,763.38 would be my, the value of my investment after five years. Now 
The next one says, Nancy Washington invested $8,700 at Mason and Mason funds for a period of nine years at an effective interest rate of 2%. So again, we want to go over to our table, and this time we're going to go nine years at 2%. So 1.1972, 1.1972. So I'm going to do 1.1972 times my $8,700. 1.1972 times $8,700 means I would have $10,415.64. So $10,415.64 after that nine year period. Number six, same thing, Tom Jenkins invested $4,400 for a period of four years at an interest rate of 4%. And so I'm going to clear off the board and go over here. Four years for an interest rate of 4%. Four years at 4% would be 1.1735. 1.1735. So 1.1735, if I remember that right, $4,400. So $4,400 times 1.1735 would give me $5,063.40. $5,063.40. Would be the value of my investment after that four year period. So, a compound interest table makes it a lot quicker and easier to figure out what the total value is after you've had it in there for so many years. Number seven says Frank Wood invested $33,000 at Jackson Investment Incorporated for a period of 14 years at an investment rate of 1% each year compounded annually. We're going to use the compound interest table. Again, there'll be a link to that to calculate the value of the investment at the end of the 14-year period. Now, in this one, what you want to do is take your percent divided by how many times it's compounded per year. And then you're also going to want to take your time times the number of times it's compounded per year. When it's compounded annually, it's really not going to do much, but we're going to sometimes compound quarterly or semi-annually or some other way. So here, I would technically say, okay, I've got 1%, I'm compounding it once a year. So I'm still going to look under 1%, and I'm going to do 14 years compounding it once per year. So I'm going to do 14 total times. It's not going to change anything on the table when it's compounded annually, but when we do other ones, it will make a difference. So then we go to our compound interest table, and we say, okay, it was 1%, 14 periods, and so we're going to use 1.1495. 1.1495. So we're then going to do sort of like we did before. We're going to take that 1.1495 times the 33,000 that they invested. Grab our calculator. 1.1495 would give us 37,933 dollars and 50 cents. So again, on number eight, number eight, Barbara Lopez invested $25,000 at Thompson & Thompson Venture Funds for a period of 22 years at an interest rate of 9% compounded annually. Again, I would technically say 9% compounded once per year is still 9%, and 22 years times once per year is still 22 times. 
So I'm going to look under 9% and 22. And so I go to my compound interest table, 9% and 22. So 9% and 22 would give me 6.6586. 6.6586. And you want to write that down somewhere or have it over on the side so that you remember here when we go back here then. I'm going to take my $25,000 times 6.6586. So if I do that, 25000 times 6.6586, it gives me 1664.65. So $166,465 would be my value of my investment after 22 years. That's a pretty good increase, huh? So in number nine, it says Kevin Lee invested $37,000 at Satin Mutual Funds for a period of three years at an interest rate of 6% each year. And again, it says compounded annually. Well, we already did two that said compounded annually. So let's change it to semi-annually. So you can see how that works. If I have it compounded semi-annually, that means I'm going to compound it twice a year. So I'm going to take my interest rate of 6% per year and divide it by 2 so that I'm doing 3% each time. I'm going to have it in there 3 years. I'm compounding it twice a year, so I'm going to compound it a total of 6 times. So when I use my compound interest table, I have to look under 3% and 6 times if I'm compounding it semi-annually. So I'm going to go to my compound interest table. If I look under 3% and 6 times, I've got to move it up here. 6 times at 3%, I get 1.1941. 1 1.1941. Go back over here to my paper. If it is semi-annually, we're using 1.1941 times our $37,000. And so if we take 37,000 times 1.1941, we get $44,181.70. $44,181.71. And on the following ones, we're still going to be using that compound interest table so you'll get some more examples of ones that are not just compounded annually, but I wanted to at least give you one example there in that section because you'll have annually, semi-annually, quarterly, you might even have monthly. Number 10, Barbara Lewis purchased a one-year $13,000 certificate of deposit at Southern Savings and Loan. The interest rate for the CD was 2% each year compounded semi-annually. Use the compound interest table and calculate the following. So we're doing year one investment value. We're doing 2% annually, but we're compounding it semi-annually twice a year. So we have to take our percent divided by two, which means in our table we're going to look under 1%. We also have to figure out the total number of compounding periods. We're doing just year one. We're compounding it twice a year, so two times. So in our compound interest table, we're going to look under 1% two times. So if I go over to our compound interest table, 1% two times would be the number 1 1.02, 1.0201, 1 1.0201. So back to our worksheet, we're going to take that 13,000 then times 1.0201 to find the total value. And so if I go ahead and do that, 13,000 times 1.0201 gives me $13,261.30. And that is going to be the first answer. What is the year one investment value? Now my interest for year one is just going to be the difference between what the value is and that 13,000. So if I take my 13,261.30 and subtract off 13,000, 13,261.30, 
I'm going to have a difference of $261.30. If I write my right number there, it's $13,261.30 was the total value of the investment after year one. The certificate of deposit was 13, so the difference between the two, the interest would be the 261.30 that we have right there. We then have to find the effective interest rate. So we are going to take the interest for, from year one, the 261.30, and we're going to divide it by the original amount, the 13,000. And so if I take my 261.30, Divide it by 13,000, I get 0 0.0201. So as a percent, we would have 2.01%. So the year one total investment value, 13,261.30. The interest for year one, that extra amount, 261.30. And the effective interest rate, 2.01%. Number 11 should be very similar to that. I'm going to erase the board because otherwise when we look at our table we might see all that scribbling. And I don't see my little be able to scroll the board. Maybe I need to close that. Number 11, Scott Perez purchased a one-year $38,000 certificate of deposit at Northeastern Credit Union. The interest rate for the CD was 4% each year compounded quarterly. So again, this is the annual interest rate, 4%. We're compounding it quarterly, so four times a year, we have to take 4% divided by 4, which means we're going to look under the 1% column. We're doing the year one investment value. We we're putting it only in for one year, but we're compounding it quarterly four times. So the total number of times we're compounding it is four times altogether. So in our table, we're going to look under the 1% and four times. So if we go ahead and look at our table, under 1% and four times, we would have 1.0406. 1.0406. And so if we go back to our worksheet here, we're going to take our $38,000 then times our 1.0406 to find the total value of the investment after the first year. So $38,000 times 1.0406 gives me $39,542.80. So that would be the value after year one. $39,542.80. We want to find the interest for year one, so we're going to take that $39,542.80 and subtract the original value, $38,000. And so the extra amount we made, $1,542.80. So my interest for year one, $1,542.80. We also want to find the effective interest rate. So to do that, we're going to take our interest, $1,542.80, and divide it by the original value, $38,000. $1,542.80 divided by 32, oops, 38,000 gives me 0 0.0406. We have to change that to a percent, so we get 4.06% for our effective interest rate. So number 12 says Nancy Hall purchased a one-year $15,000 certificate of deposit at Northeastern Credit Union. The interest rate for the CD was 4% each year compounded semi-annually. So 4% compounded semi-annually would be twice a year. So 4% divided by 2 means we're going to use the 2% column. 
We're going to leave it in there for one year, but we're compounding it two times a year. So the total number of times that we're going to compound that is two times. So on our table, we want to look under 2% and 2. And so if we look under 2% and 2, we have 1.0404. 1 1.0404. So going back here, our investment was $15,000. We're using 1.0404 from our table. If I multiply that out, 15,000 times 1.0404, we get $15,606. The effect or the interest for the year then, if I had, if it's worth fifteen thousand six hundred and six dollars, and it was originally fifteen thousand dollars, that means we made six hundred and six dollars in interest. So for my effective interest rate, the rate is equal to the interest over the principal and the time. My interest would be the six hundred six dollars. My principal, 15000 the time is just one year. And so we can take 606 divided by 15000 because 15000 times 1 is still 15000 So we get 0 0.0404, which as a percent would be 4.04% for my effective interest rate. So on number 13, Janet Hayes estimates she needs to have an additional $340,000 in order to retire in 17 years. Using the present value table, calculate the amount that Janet should invest today in order to obtain the additional $340,000 in 17 years. Assume her investment will earn 3% per year compounded annually. So the present value table tells you how much do I need to invest right now so that in the future I will have this much money. So the present value table works very similar to the compound interest table where you have to take the percent divided by the number of compounding periods and the time times the number of compounding periods. And just glancing ahead, I see my other one say annually, so I'll probably have to switch some of those. On this one, we'll just go ahead and do it with annually. So if it's 3% compounded once a year, we're still gonna look under 3%. If it's 17 years compounding once a year, it's still going to be 17 times. So in our table, we're going to look under 3% and 17 times. And so if I do that, 3% 17 times is point, point zero point six zero five zero. So point six zero five zero. I'm then going to go back over here on my worksheet here. And so I want to have 340,000. I'm going to multiply by 0 0.6050 and I'm going to grab my calculator. So 340,000 times 0 0.6050 means that I would need to invest $205,700 And that's how much I need right now in order to, in 17 years, have $340,000. So in number 14, it wants Frank Taylor estimates he needs an additional $280,000 in order to retire in 27 years. Using the present value table, calculate the amount that Frank should invest today in order to obtain the additional $280,000 he wants in 27 years. Assume his investment will earn 2% per year compounded annually. Well, so we can have an example that's different than what we had before. We're going to change this. We're going to compound it semi-annually. And because the table doesn't go up as high if I would have to have it for 27 years, we're just going to say we want to have it in there for 10 years. So he wants to get $280,000 in 10 years, and it's going to be compounded 2% per year semi-annually. So if I look at my table, 
I'm going to do 2% semi-annually. So 2% divided by 2 means I'm going to look under the 1% column. 10 years semi-annually means I'm going to do 20 times. 10 percent time, or 10 years times 2, 20 compounding periods. So in my table, I am going to look under 1% and 20 compounding periods. So we are going to do 1% in 20, and so we're going to use 0 0.8195. 0 0.8195. So in order to retire in 10 years, compounding it semi-annually, we're going to take the 280,000, times 0 0.8195, which is the number from our table. So I'm going to grab my calculator, 280,000 times 0.8195 means we would have to have 229460, $229,460 right now. We need quite a bit of it if we're only going to leave it in 10 years. 2% twice a year. So we need 229,460 right now in order to get $280,000 in 10 years. And again, number 15, I'm going to change a little bit. We'll leave it at four years. That'll work good. But I'm going to make it 8% compounded quarterly. Just so you have a different example. Sam Gonzalez estimates he needs an additional $380,000 in order to retire in four years. Using the present value table, calculate the amount that Sam should invest today in order to obtain the additional $380,000 in four years. Assume he's going to earn 8% compounded quarterly. So 8% compounded quarterly, four times a year, means we're going to use the 2% column. Four years... Compounded quarterly means 16 total times. Four years, four times a year, 16 times. So we're going to look under the 2% and 16. So 2% column, oops, i got to move it a little bit to get to 16 times. 2% and 16, 0 0.7284. 0 0.7284 is 2%. 16 compounding periods. So 0 0.7284, if I'm going to do 8% compounded quarterly. So I want to end up with 380,000. I'm going to multiply by 0.7284. So I would need to have $276,792 right now so that in four years I end up with my $380,000. So compound interest table and present value table and a lot of other tables we're going to have will work that same way where you have to take the percent divided by the number of compounding periods and then the times, the time, times the number of compounding periods. So that is the end of day 20, interest, compound interest, and present value. You can try those ones out on your pie chart.